Welcome to Ink and Magic, a podcast where we read and discuss the writing craft, world building, and romance of paranormal and fantasy novels. If you love books with bite, set in worlds of magic and mayhem, then you're in the right place. My name's Nikisha Shane. I go by an S. And I'm Leslie. I write as Elle Penelope. And welcome to the show. Leslie, we're back for another Side Changeling adventure. Yeah, we are up to book eight in the Side Changeling saga, Bonds of Justice. And this time... Yeah, we're moving along. We are focused on Max, who we met in a previous book, who was a human cop, and a new character we've never seen before, Sophia, who is a psi. And but she's not just any psi. We're just, I think the last book mentioned the Jason. Yeah, because they they started to Malini Singh is the they started to prep us for what a J Psy is and what they do. Right. The J is the justice psi. And they're t- I guess they're all telepaths, but they have special telepathic abilities. Because she can broadcast what she sees mm-hmm. to other so- It says she can broadcast it to other side, but I got the, the, the idea that she could broadcast it to humans too. Because Max, right. the hero, of course he's the perfect hero for her because he is a human with natural shields. Right. So as a telepath, she's not in his mind. She, she can't break his shields. Even uh, later, Caleb can't really break his shields. We find out who's the most, you know powerful sigh ever probably <laughs> this is total edward bella stuff because remember bella was a shield yeah yeah i mean it's a good you know it's a good thing to do when you're doing a romance like if one character has a power the other character kind of has to be immune to it mm-hmm. well they, you know 90 percent of the time you see that because it just makes them special it's like that reason why these two people have to be together as opposed yeah. to someone else so uh, like you said a jsi is someone who can get into someone's memories. They can get into someone's heads and then, yes, then they can broadcast it. But they, they, the JSI works specifically, in the prologue, it even talks about how the JSI were left to work with humans, how most Psy like retreated from mm. humans, but the JSI, it was, it was profitable and advantageous for them to continue to work in the justice system alongside humans. Right. And we know the side do everything for profit. Yeah. This book has a lot of parallels to other books, I felt. It was a lot of, I felt a lot of uh, Faith Vaughn parallels and Faith and Vaughn show up in this book too, just in terms of, so not only is Sophia a J Psy, uh, J Psy, like the F Psy, like Faith, uh, are all basically go crazy and, and <laughs> put down. You know, they can only have a short lifespan because they're dealing with the worst of the worst, the worst mm. criminals, not just any crime. Jays deal with the worst crime and they have to be inside of these people's heads and it degrades their shields. And that's a problem for Sophia. And then we also find out that she can't ever leave the sign net because she's entangled due to some childhood trauma. So touch also hurts her physically like it did with Faith. And so Max and Vaughn aren't exactly analogs. You know, this is what it looks like if Vaughn wasn't quite so forceful. And so like, I'm doing this anyway. Max is a kinder, gentler version. And that's one of the reasons their interactions, you and I had very different opinions about this book, but I really liked that they're this couple. I like their interactions. This level of a similar conflict that we've seen before with, with these two types of characters worked at this level for me a lot better. I thought it was really interesting how um, Sophia started calling Max a puma, but then later she she kept likening him to a puma in her in her in her mind. She never I, I don't think not remember this at all. Very early on in the book because I wrote it down because I was like, oh, one because I feel like whenever Nalini Singh has a non changeling character, she gives them changeling characteristics. She gives them cat like characteristics. Mm-hmm. So I felt like at the beginning of this book, she was giving Max very cat-like characteristics but then Sophia started calling him uh, a tiger who's decided to behave for a while I remember briefly her saying something like that um I think it's just that these men still have to be alphas so even Mm -hmm. if they're not changelings the humans still have to be alphas in their own way and you know, I didn't see that she was comparing him necessarily to a cat there were times when you know Sophia in Sophia's POV she would you know there were some similarities to the changing men that she was interacting with, but he's not, to me, he wasn't as bad. He wasn't quite as dominant. He wasn't quite as possessive. It was that a little bit light, like dialed down to a normal, Mm -hmm. reasonable level. (laughs) 
So they meet, do you know I love a meet cute, but they it's we're on page one and they are they have already met, they have already interacted, and they're 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 in the same vicinity on page one, but they're not interacting with each other. They're interacting with a psychopath. Yeah, and that was the, a tough part for me because she Nalini Singh has never shied away from the darkness and these is always a crime, is always often a criminal and a sadistic twisted criminal, which we are get in this book as well. Um, there's this serial killer who Max has put away, and uh, Sophia is the J responsible. They're trying to find the bodies of his victims. So he's only been convicted for one of these crimes, and he's this rich, handsome, charming, sort of like Ted Bundy kind of guy, I think. Um, and yeah, we don't get a meet cute, which we could have because they had just met recently. It's not like they met months and years ago, but we don't see the meet cute on the page. And I guess it's a way to speed things up where we want to hit the ground running in chapter one. So even though I, I always miss not getting a meet cute, this was fine. Um, <laughs> and then again, what, what like Sasha, like Faith, Sophia is afraid of now we have a comprehensive rehabilitation yeah. where as opposed to just a normal one, it's even worse. The stakes are being raised. Yeah, because she is con Jays are constantly getting reconditioned. They describe it as because their shields deteriorate so quickly. Because they have to have this level of interaction with other, with human emotions, with humans doing the worst things possible. Not, oh, lovey-dovey, sweet, right. gentle emotions. No, with the worst emotions. These people who are supposed to be silent see the worst parts of humanity on repeat. And yeah, and she starts to deteriorate. Like you said, she couldn't touch. She wears gloves. She, you can't touch any part of her skin or she could like go into freaking shock and potentially die because her shields are so weak. Right. Yeah. And every, the first few chapters were just, she's laying the groundwork of why this could never work. They could never touch. She could never leave the net. She, her, she's almost going to be killed by this com comprehensive rehabilitation. It's, it's very dire. And we, and we are pounded with that over and over again throughout the story. So it does build the tension of this relationship. You're like, how are we going to get out of this? How is this ever going to work out with these characters? And it's a slow burn. I don't consider it a slow burn to me. It was a people. <laughs> More that Leslie, this was a slow. How was it a slow burn, burn. when from okay. almost the beginning, they are into each other and they admit it. It was a slow bang. Okay, that's different. Yeah, it was a slow bang. I don't need first chapter sex if I have first chapter emotional resonance. Their emotions were so heightened from very early on. So yes, they didn't have sex until later on. But the they end, were in the end. They were in the relationship. The emotions were there. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't know why that bothered me. It real, but it really did. Uh, they didn't I, have I, sex until late. No. It well, yes and no. It what I feel like. I felt like this was a thriller that was interrupted by romance. Mm. So we talked a bit about the 12 stages of intimacy. And I felt like, like, I don't think Nylene Singh was doing this on purpose, but in my brain, I was like clocking there at level one, which is awareness. Then, then like, then here comes again, the thriller um, plot. And then they come back. They're at level two, eye to eye. <laughs> And then it was the thriller again. I'm I'm being a little facetious, but it was like like there was hand to hand. Like that was like it was like um those old Harlequin historicals where you like like Mr. Darcy brushes Elizabeth's hand and they both have an orgasm. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it felt like to me. And I think I think I'm annoyed because I'm not a thriller reader. Like this, like we talk about um we were talking recently about how a lot of, especially women, will sit and watch these crime dramas and listen to these crime podcasts, mm -hmm. true crime things. Yeah. Um, and we were talking with a friend, which you guys will hear soon, about we think this is because the increase of this and the increase of true crime watching and the increase of um, like dark romance is because we've been so sheltered inside and safe because of that crazy thing we all went through in, two, in, the, in 2020. That that you can raise this, you can raise the stakes, you can show us the worst because we feel so safe inside right now. But I still, I, I still, I'm not one that has ever really enjoyed true crime or or darkness. And I felt like there was so much of that, and I just mm -hmm. wanted to get back to the romance. 
I see that. Yeah. But also this whole series has been dark. This whole series is, is always from book one has been about serial killers and child murderers and abusers. True. And I don't know that this is all that much worse than anything else we've gotten. This character hidden being on the screen or on the page so much, the serial killer that, that both of them are, you know, they, they've put away, but they're trying to get him to tell the, the location of these bodies he killed. Um, I think that he was very disturbing. Oh you my know, God. He was extremely disturbing, definitely. And, but there's been other very disturbing things that have happened in the series. So for me, it wasn't that much different. Like maybe she dialed it up a notch. I felt like she dialed it up. Okay. And I can see that. I can definitely see that. Because yeah. the other books, I, I I like to read at night. I like to either read at night, or listen, or listen to an audiobook at night, or I like to go and take the book with me on a walk. I started this book at night. I did not get out of chapter one before I said, you know what? If you want to have a good night's sleep, mm. you better turn on some somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> turn this off. Because, yeah, we were confronted with a serial killer on page one and the awful things that he did on page one. Yeah, that's true. That is true. I mean, for me, the romance coming alongside of it worked because it, it grew gradually. So in that way, I can see kind of slow burn. But I really appreciated that it wasn't like some of the other books where she was denying her feelings. She never denied her feelings. She was into mm -hmm. him from the beginning. Yep. And they very quickly admitted to each other or it was very obvious to both of each other that they were into each other. And they just they knew they had to take it slow because her being a JSI, she had to take it slow. She had never been touched in years and years. So it couldn't be banging on the first page because she would have literally died. <laughs> she also thinks that she's going to be dead within the year because her right. shields are so degraded. And she knows she's she's one of the longest surviving JSIs and she's one of the best at the job. Of course, they both have to be the best at their job. So Max is a, a top-notch um, cop, but he also has these natural shields, which makes him even better than everybody else. And Faith Faith. And um, Sophie is so incredibly good at her job and she's blasted at it longer than anybody else. And they keep putting her on it, even though she should be out to pasture. Mm -hmm. They keep reconditioning her so that she can. It's just like when you um those those when you see somebody in a boxing ring mm. and they're both of their eyes are like you got to cut their eyes and they're bloody. Yeah, it's like that. It's like they're like, no, you can do it again. Go again. Where, you know, this person is literally going to be brain damaged. I didn't, I mean, I felt like she was still, she knew that she was at the end of her time and she still mm -hmm. wanted to do it. This was her purpose. This is the only thing she had. If she can't do this in the sci world, there's nothing for you. So you're going to die anyway. It's not like you can just say, oh, I think I want to retire now. You know? But do you remember how she was talking with another Jay? This, we're skipping around just a little bit. She's talking with, Sophia's talking with this other Jay and she, she, she's like, did we ever have a a choice that we ever have a chance to be something else as soon as they saw this designate she asked this person she's like did you apply to something else and i think this other person said yes and i got denied they they saw that we were jays and we had no other options right there were no other jobs available and it was kind of like it, you know the other jobs were technically available but they had been funneled into this purposefully absolutely you know we are we dive more into the psi world here and we're always with the counselors and we'll talk about Nikita in a minute, but you know, just their, the way that they treat people, the way that they treat their people, the way Sophia's parents treated her oh, is, is underscored. And yeah, it's, it's definitely rough. Sophia and Max part ways. They don't think they'll ever see each other again. And then Nikita, who is Sasha's mother, who's the psych counselor, uh, has a need for an enforcement officer and a J and she brings both of them together to work for her personally. So that's their adhesion point. They come back together to work on this case because Nikita is having people who work for her drop dead. Yeah. And it, they're made to look like they're accidents or suicides, but they're all sigh and not that many accidents happen and suicides are rare. So, mm -hmm. and Max is, you know, the good cop. He, I don't remember his motivation exactly. He just, you know, this is something that he thinks he can do because he has natural shields. Nikita asks for him because other sigh can't interfere with him. And so that's the cover story, although Max kind of believes that maybe something else is at play here because she specifically asks for Max and specifically asks for Sophia as well. I don't know if this is the best place to talk about th her motivations or th there's a really big underlying theme of mothers specifically mm -hmm. and, and familial ties. Yeah. 
they they actually both both Sophia and Max start to question it because as they they so Nikita puts them up um in rooms next to each other and they this is how they start to get closer and closer you know they're talking to each other at night they give each other permission like it's like a key of a hand key print mm -hmm. for them to enter each other's room and they give each other access to each other's room max has this ownery cantankerous cat <laughs> and the cat starts to take to sophia so there's some really pretty and beautiful um, fun and games moments as they're getting to know each other and eating together and, and working on the case together. Yeah. And then they start to tell each other their secrets. Yeah. Max tells her about his past and he says, I've never told, I've never shared this with anyone else. And we learn that his mother hated him. Right. We don't get a lot of details, but we, it's the sense that is she was very abusive towards him. And he had a younger brother named River who had a different father and the mother loved River. Um, and that caused problems between the brothers and caused problems with his brother River, which becomes important because River as an eight year old becomes a drug addict. It's like very, very strange and then disappears. So Max is scarred by not having a mother who loved him. And then Sophia's parents also basically disowned her when she was eight years old and just sent her off to the Jays because of a very traumatic thing that happened to her, which we find out later. So, yeah. And I, I think I wonder if it's OK to talk about that now, because that's that becomes part of their falling in love of them telling each other these secrets that they do not talk about with other people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as they're moving down the 12 stages of intimacy. Um, kisses their cheek, <laughs> if they touch their hands. Uh, yeah, we just like little increments forward. Because her shields are so, so weak. But yeah, mm -hmm. Max shares his story um, about, about his family and how much his mother hated him and treated him awfully. Sophia eventually opens up about that her parents disowned her, but but then she starts and, and completely disowned her. So, so this book... What are we calling it again, Leslie? Because I get them mixed up. We got the interstitials that are at the beginning and the epigraphs that are at the end. How is no, that? epigraphs are the chapter headers. So this one has notes from Sophia to Max and then like Max's diary open up each chapter. Yes. So we start to... <sighs> We start to get a little bit from them. Some some of Sophia's like, and some of it's, it's coming like a little bit out of order too. Um, Cause at some point in Sophia's diary, she starts to talk about, she starts to talk specifically to Max. Mm -hmm. But before that, we see some of the letters that she wrote to, or a mention of the letters that she wrote to her parents, trying to get them to come and get her. Mm -hmm. And they basically, the, the letter that finally comes back to her is cold silence of you we you are not our responsibility anymore we did everything that we were supposed to do to sever our ties because you are no longer acceptable as a child of our name so you're we have cut you out of our family right. it was brutal yeah yeah and so that you know they have the the mother child relationship reflected there too and both of her parents honestly i i, I think she had siblings and maybe they went on to have other siblings yeah. because she was defective you know, and she had gone through this terrible situation, which had left her to her parents defective. Yeah. So circling that back around to Miss Nikita, who hires these two people and they're both wondering, what is her motivation? Why did she hire the two of us? She mm -hmm. hired somebody else like Max is stationed in New York, I believe. Mm -hmm. And Sophia, you know, Sophia's on these big jobs and you come to her. And she makes it seem like Nikita, and, and I mean, I buy this. Nikita makes it seem like there could be another counselor trying to sabotage me because I think Max or Sophia asked her, this is an arrows job. Why are you hiring us? Right. And Nikita says, well, the arrows are under Ming yeah. and I need to make sure this, this, this could make me look weak. Somebody could actually get to me. I need the two of you mm -hmm. to make this happen. But as the reader... We know a lot more about Nikita because we we know about Sasha and we know about some of the things Nikita has been doing uh, behind the scenes in these other books. So we have these two people who whose parents who's who's uh, Max doesn't know who his dad is at the time, and his mother completely rejected him. Sophia's parents rejected her, and Nikita rejected her daughter. And so even if they are not like, hmm, we as the readers are like, what's going on here? 
And I personally have been wondering since book one about Nikita and the level of her actual rejection of Sasha. So by this time, Sasha's like five months pregnant. They've been keeping it a secret. Nobody knows. Um, but Sasha, every time we're back in her POV, you know, we get that longing, that pain about her mother. Like, Did my mother actually love me? How silent is she? And that's been growing over these, you know, seven books before now. And so this really kind of blows a wide open where we get our confirmation by the end of this book about mm -hmm. where Nikita really stands Ugh, and what she's been so doing behind her. the scenes. Yeah, because she's gathered people around her in her upper echelons, her inner circle of her corporate world. Some of them, or some of them are very loyal and some of them are a little bit broken too. And I think other side are starting to see that maybe Nikita is a place we can go if we are a little bit broken. Maybe she's a collector of broken people. So we're going to circle back around because that brings that, that, bring, that dovetails us back into, you know, there's a plot to this book. The plot, the excellent <laughs> plot, which you were not super a fan of. No, no, I got very confused because there was a lot of people dying. So a lot of names. There's a lot of names and they were dying. <laughs> um, so Nikita had a couple of her um, assistants die. They mm -hmm. either looked like a suicide or it looked like an accident. And Max and Sophia are gathering this information. But as they're questioning, they start to meet other people um, in her world. Like um, they meet Nikia, Nikita's number one assistant. Who was a woman. I can't remember her name. I can't remember anybody's names. Um, and there's a, an intern. Right. There's a French dude. Right. <laughs> and someone else. <laughs> right. Exactly. So as Max and Sophia, they get surveillance for the for one of the people who looks like it, he committed suicide. And they're get they get the surveillance footage. And they're watching this video, trying to see who um, was coming and going. They oh, that wasn't the suicide. That was someone who was just, he dropped dead or something. He he was killed while they were talking to her, while they were interviewing her. It was the latest murder. And it happened in, like, in the, in the building where they live, in the apartment. So, yeah, they're watching the footage of who's going in and out of his apartment. Yes. And who do they see going into the apartment next door? But one, Sasha Duncan. Right. Which brings the changelings into this. And of course, Lucas is, is going to have a coronary because they, <laughs> you, you want to accuse my maid of what? And, they're like, and Max handles this because there's, there's this tension between Max and um, Lucas. And Max handles it brilliantly. Mm -hmm. like, like a cop would. Like a good cop would. Like, calm down. Not even say calm down. But, you know, soothing tones. Cause, and Sasha explains. She's like, I'm an empath. There's no way that I could have killed anybody because I would feel it too. And so then they asked, well, what were you doing? Right. And Sasha explains, and she, this is where it starts to become heartbreaking. Yeah. Cause Sasha, the Nikita's assistant, her main assistant, she was with Nikita before Sasha was born. So Sasha gets it in her mind that I can go and talk to this assistant and I can get some information about how my mother was when she was pregnant with me. Yeah, because I imagine it's super difficult to be pregnant, not have done it before, and not have your mother to rely on to ask questions. And I think that's part of where it's coming from. Did she love me when when she was pregnant with me? Did she ever love me? These are her, as an empath especially, these are mm -hmm. her concerns. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was totally heartbreaking. And but Nikita is, is such a badass. Like, as cold as she is, she she's all, she, she lights up the page when she's on it, really. She kind of feels the scene. Nikita is, everybody else is playing chess. Nikita is playing three-dimensional chess. No, everybody else is playing checkers. Yeah. And Nikita is playing some serious three-dimensional chess. You, she, we were talking about villains recently and she, you cannot help but admire her. Oh yeah. Yeah. And we know she's done, you know, there was book two or three where she was having people killed. She was trying to kill the changelings. I was thinking, okay, are they going to, what is her deal? Like, I felt like she really did love her daughter, but she actually is trying to kill Lucas and kill some of the changelings in one of those books. And then she kind of get here to, she's figured out she can't do that. That's not going to work. She's all about making money. I don't know what it is about her. We have to break down her character, but I think she's cold weird. as ice. She's very capable. She's very dangerous. She's scary, but she's actually not heartless. And maybe that's what it is. Yeah. It's like she, it's like, you know, like um, she has rules. Yeah. They're her rules. She has a code. She, exactly. She has a code. And her code is the Psy race, but it's also her blood. And she mm. won't let you mess with her blood. 
and then also her territory. Her we, yeah, we get it's like, my race, her territory, her blood. Yeah. I'm not sure what the order is. <laughs> exactly. It's all together. Because, yeah, we end up in a place where don't come into my territory. If you come yeah. into my territory, I will kill you immediately. So just to kind of complete out that mother theme, mm -hmm. um, and then we can get back to the external plot. Something that really else that really interested me. Um, the so so it, well, part of the external plot is they are they are trying to get the bodies to find out where the bodies are of the murder. And I forget the I forget the sociopath's name. Bonner. I think it's Bonner. Thank you, Bonner. It is Bonner. Um, they're trying to get Bonner to tell them where these bodies are. And at some point, he's just playing games, and 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 Sophia can see he's not going to give it up. Let's go. Mm -hmm. They go and they work with Nikita. And then at one point, while they're working with Nikita, Bonner calls and he's like, "I'm ready to talk." And so. Max and Sophia have to go back because mm -hmm. they have they have an obligation to these families who want their children's bodies so that they can give them a proper burial. Um, actually, no. At one point, he calls her. They yeah, call, they have a yeah, phone conference. They have a phone conversation first, video chat, <laughs> and 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 she's like, "Yeah, he's not going to give me anything. Cut him off," which ticks him off, and she's like, "Let him stew," basically, because yeah. she's she's really good. Sophia is really good at her job, yeah. and I'm saying all of this because there, Bonner comes back, and you know that she goes and she they they are face to face, and then he comes back again. But here's the thing, because Nalini Singh extended the this what I'm calling the mother theme to that sociopath as well, mm. because all of the awful things that he did. He had his parents, he had his parents backing in the sense that they kept trying to get him out of things. Oh, you killed somebody? Oh, well, let's get you the best lawyer in the world to make sure that you can get off. Oh, you didn't get off. Well, let's make sure you're comfortable. And here comes, spoiler alert, we all know we're spoiling because we're talking about the whole book. At some point, Bonner escapes. And guess who's helping him? Yeah, his rich parents get him a private plane to... And money and and Max knows this is what's happening. Yeah, that was, I mean, it's not implausible because it happens all the time. It's just very dispiriting. <laughs> but that's but my point is, you know, Max and Sophia had awful parents or had awful and or absent parents. Mm -hmm. Nikita is awful and she's trying to act like she's absent, but you see her pulling the strings. As the reader behind the scenes, and then you have this sociopath whose parents still love him and yeah. look at what's happening because of it. That's what fascinated me about this whole book. That those themes right there. I was I was leaning in with that. Oh, I didn't put it together with Bonner, but yeah, his, I didn't think about his parents helping him in that way as part of that theme. You just you have it all different kinds of parenting, all different levels of support from negative support, zero support to way too much support for your sociopath murdering child. Like that's when you stop supporting them. I'm sorry. Yeah. Really, it makes my stomach hurt just even thinking about, again, why I didn't read this book at night. <laughs> to keep reading. I would go to bed mad. I was, I was mad. Oh man. Um, but yeah, so we have uh, Max and Sophia following the clues about people, you know, killing Nikita's people, and it seems like it's going to lead back to Pure Psy, this organization who of Psy who want silence and who are hating other races, a sort of racist organization. Um, as they get closer and closer, we're seeing Faith at some point comes in. Faith yeah. has had a vision of something terrible happening. And I don't know, we don't get the resolution of that in this book. She she heads off, she saves them a couple times. Like she's gotten a vision that there's a bomb in their car mm -hmm. and they have to get out. And then she actually comes, you know, to visit. But she, in one of her POVs, is like, something big and terrible is going to happen, and I'm scared. Yeah. So when um, when f there's a point, as 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 Max and so Sophia are doing their dance up and down the 12 stages of intimacy, <laughs> I think this happens, This in, this because she um, passes out. Somebody tries to hack her, and she right. hacks her out. mind. Yeah. And I don't think we got a resolution of who tried to hack her mind. Yeah, not specifically. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think by the time it's wrapped up, you assume, you know, but yeah, I don't think we ever got details on that. Someone tries to hack Sophia's mind and Max just hears a thump and he he, he has the permission with his hand key, keyed into her room to go into her room. He finds her. She's passed out. He calls for Psy help and Faith and Vaughn show up in like two seconds because Faith was, Vaughn is like, 
and damn, hey, she's an F side. We knew this was going to happen. And she told me to get up an hour ago. And here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Which was a cute scene because he's like, he's like, um, I can never, I can never surprise her with gifts, but he's saying oh, yeah. it all sweet and lovely. Like I, I adore this woman. <laughs> but um, so 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 Faith comes and she checks on Sophia and and she lets Max know that she's gonna be okay. She lets him know that her shields are like dangerously thin. Mm-hmm. Um, and she says Faith says something along the lines of, she she you can tell she knows things. But she's like, Sophia needs to tell you these things. It may have been, I can't remember which secrets, but I know that that Sophia was still keeping secrets. She was keeping the secrets of what, what we learned that um, cops call Jay Justice. Yeah, because there is actually a darkness in Sophia, um, which is part of the theme too. So we have, you know, she's a Jay side. She's seen the worst part of humanity. And sometimes Jay's you know, meet out their own justice, kind of vigilante justice. She's in, there's a scene where she's in a prison with some terrible pedophile and mm-hmm. she's far away from him, but mentally she can force him to mutilate Stop himself. Mutilate. Yeah. yeah. And, and t- to death. And so this is not the first time this has happened. There's a record of her being in vicinities, but there's no proof. And she, at some point she's afraid of Max finding this out about her because he's such a good cop. That is he going to accept her? And her vigilante, and of course he does. He's like, these no, are the worst no, of the worst. We call it Jay Justice, right? And like we know that sometimes they they got to do what they got to do. They were in these people's heads. They know one hundred percent what happened. So, and that darkness that's in her becomes very relevant by the end. Um, around this time, she, we 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 read that. I don't think it's explicitly said, but we know it's the net mind. Somehow the net mind is helping Sophia, is protecting her, ends up reinforcing her shields at a certain point when they're when they're low. Um, and that, because she's also a minor anchor yeah. and that's one of the secrets she's holding from him too. Yeah. So she's a minor anchor in the net and that, yeah. There are three secrets, the J justice that she was an anchor and that's why she can never leave the net. Mm-hmm. And the other thing was, um, that she can alter memories. Right. Sometimes, even though J's are supposed to be above board, Somebody's going to make more money if this did happen or this didn't happen. And so they change things. They, that was relatively minor. I thought that was going to maybe become a bigger thing. Mm-hmm. But that is a huge ethical quandary. Yeah. So I can manipulate like they manipulate yeah. everything else. Yeah. So as, as again, as they're going up and down the 12 stages of intimacy, one of the ways that she describes her, her that her shields are changing she says it looks like it feels like a tornado or it looks like a tornado. Yeah. And at one point it's drawing attention to her because she needs on to the net. Stay, yeah, on the net. She needs to stay below the radar. So when she says, This is not helping, I can't do this, that's when the net mind steps in and helps to shield her and cloak her. Mm-hmm. And so her shields are stronger. They're this weird, weird shield, weird tornado shields, but she's being protected and helped. And we sense that. And that's that's cool. And then around this time, they do have the first sex. The, I, Sexy times happen. They've rounded. They've gotten just at stage 12. They round all of the bases. <laughs> Multiple all of times. Them. And the halfway points too. Uh, but it's good. You, sometimes you have to build up to it. It's better when you've built up that tension and you really want to see it. Okay. She shakes her head. She, she doesn't believe me. <laughs> so um, another as they're again as they're rounding the bases some fun some really fun nice fun and games happen um they max is like let's go out to dinner because you know she's a j she's just eating nutrition bars he's like let's go out to dinner and he wants to go actually go out to dinner go into the restaurant she's like yeah no i'm good and he realizes it's because there's so much there's a crowd in the restaurant and there's so many people and he he doesn't realize until he gets in and he gets takeout like she would not have been able to handle this but then um, the waitress slipped <laughs> Max her card with her number on it. And this is, again, how we know that Max is like an alpha. Because um, the guy sitting on the bar is like, I've been trying to get her number for months. What's so special about you? It's little things, authors, that we need to slip in there to reinforce that our guy is the hottest <laughs> of, in this in this particular book. He is the hottest. He's the best. He's He is always know. getting hit on. He's always getting women <laughs> slipping their numbers into him. I mean, this man must be just next level fine because that happens multiple times in this book. <laughs> and Faith, fine. No. And Sophia finds that number that was slipped into his pocket. She's not happy. She's like, 
uh, excuse me. <laughs> but you know, Matt, we we as the reader saw that Max had told the waitress, "I'm off the market." This is pretty mm -hmm. early on, right? And he told her that he's off the market because because you're right. They they knew instantly. Well, they uh, once they once they after the adhesion point, they allowed themselves to be like, "Yeah, it's gonna be on," because mm -hmm. they had thought they weren't gonna see each other again. Um, and Sophia says something along the line when she sees that number. Um, Sophia says something along the lines of, um, don't entertain others while we are learning each other. Hmm. Because even though that was sweet, she doesn't think in her mind, he, he doesn't know it yet, but it, but she's like, I'm not going to live that long. Right. Yeah. And a lot of those epigraphs are, you know, written from to a letter from her to Max mm -hmm. after she's dead or to be given to him after he dies or something yeah. like that. After so. she dies. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, and she, yeah, she has no expectation. Like this is what happens to everybody. Which we've seen before. We, you know, this is a thing that in this series has happened before. So me, I'm just like, okay, how are they going to get out of this? How are they going to pull her out of the net mind? Yeah. I mean, out of the sign net. And, you know, who's she going to go? What, whose network is she going to go into? Because Max is human. And I'm just wondering, how are we going to fix this? And we see the doors closing mm -hmm. because we, was it Tally that asked um, Clay? Like, can we bring her in? And Clay's like, we can't do it. I wish, but we can't do it. And then I think even Faith and Vaughn have the conversation like we cannot do it. Like we would if we could. Right. Cause yeah, it'd be either Sasha or Faith that looks in her mind and knows how entangled she is. And it's not just her being an anchor, or maybe she's an anchor because of the trauma when she was young. It, you know, her only way to survive it was to dig herself so deep into the net. But I was still like, well, how are we gonna get her out? It's gonna be yeah. At one point, they asked, can Nora and Keenan do it? Like they yeah, did like yeah. Catalina in the last book. Um, and they're like, no, that was physical damage. This is totally mental. So they, you know, our, our changelings, who are their allies now, are trying to figure out, because they see the signs on the wall. They see Max and this woman are together, and they want to help. And it was well-paced, because we see them getting closer, mm -hmm. and then we see these doors shut. Yeah. So we're like, well, we're because we're thinking, well, obviously... She's going to do a link with the dark, um, with dark river, obviously. Yeah. Or nope. maybe door into the, um, the human shine net or whatever, like right? something's going to happen. Nope. Door shut. Yeah. An anchor. She cannot be yanked out or she will die. So we're, 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 we're going to get there. Um, and maybe we should close out the, um, the external plot. That might be a good idea. <laughs> Yeah, well, and it, the extra plot actually was super fun <laughs> by the time it ended, when, when Caleb gets involved. So um, Nikita, I mean, Sophia mm -hmm. is essentially kidnapped by some psi and taken to be reconditioned or, or the, the bad one, comprehensive rehabilitation, out from under Max's nose. We know that Bonner escaped. We don't know where he is. He's probably after Sophia. She's on lockdown. But these people with the past the key to her apartment, just open the door and, and drug her and snatch her. And they're not Bonner. We think it's going to be Bonner. Yeah, we think it's going to be Bonner. Yeah. And that's, that was a nice little twist. Very they nicely did. done. They take her, they're on in the, on route to be re, uh, rehabilitated. And then Bonner comes in and apparently he's a super criminal and he was watching them, disab disables their car and steals her away. Yes. Which was so very nicely done. Nice twist, yeah. Very nice twist. And then... We get Caleb Krychek on the scene. Nikita goes to Caleb and asks for a favor. Yeah, because Max is like, do you know any teleporters? I need to teleport to her location. They figure out where she's gone, but he can't get there in time. And I'm assuming it's going to be the our, our, our standby teleby. Yeah, Vasic. But no, 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 no. Here comes Caleb Krychek. <laughs> really, she couldn't go to an arrow. She couldn't go to Vasic. That wouldn't sure. have made sense. But sure. we, I'm, I'm waiting for Vasic somehow to show up to know maybe Anthony. We know Anthony's involved. Anyway. Caleb shows up to do a favor for Nikita. And it was mm -hmm. just like, she called in bi the big dogs. Like this favor, yeah. she's going to owe Caleb to save this random JSI. That's the first, well, not the first, but that's another, you know, thing we are finding about out about Nikita. She's going to the wall for these people. She's digging her debt deep. And Caleb shows up and seems happy to help. <laughs> like he's like, let's do this. As happy more. as a tie could be. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> As he has his blank mask on his face. Yeah. <laughs> no emotion whatsoever. But, but he, it, he gets it done. And it's still so fun to see him on the page. Like, I don't know why he's such a delight when he's on the page. So he um, helps Max to track down where um, 
Bonner. Bonner, thank you. Where Bonner is keeping Sophia. They track them to the parents, like summer house or a lake house or something like that. Oh, these parents. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, and Bonner, he has her in his clutches. She was drugged, so she's having trouble. She manages to, she has this internal um debate with herself because if he t- if that man with all of his darkness touches her mm-hmm. while her shields are in such disarray. She she knows she's going to die. And she's like, do I tell him and give him another weapon to use against me? Or do I let him do this and potentially die? And she decides to tell him. And because I think she knows that he doesn't want to kill her immediately, kind of mm-hmm. wants to draw it out. So she'll, she knows Max is coming for her. So she just needs to stay alive and have more time. So she knows he likes to torture, whatever. He's going to take more time. And if he knows that he can't touch her, he probably won't. Which he doesn't really. I mean, he... At the, we're at the very moment where he's about to touch her. And that's when Max breaks in. Caleb is still there for some reason. He's like, I'm here too. I'm helping. Why not? This is an interesting moment for me. <laughs> we don't know his motivation. And then Max Max pulls Bonner away and Caleb ends up just killing him. <laughs> he's like, because Max is going to play back. It. He's like, why? Well, Caleb uh, like wipes his mind, actually finds the location of all the girls yeah. they were looking for, and then mm-hmm. mentally kills him. Yeah. He's like, what? I'm not supposed to not kill him? This dude was awful. <laughs> and that's Caleb Krawcheck saying that. So <laughs> right. that's a lot. Um, so yeah, they she saved. They um and the book's not over. <laughs> well, also, she's saved, but something happens that puts her in the hospital right after that. Is that here? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I think he actually maybe did touch her a second or, or she, the drugs, whatever happened. I think the drugs interacted very badly. And mm-hmm. so Caleb has to teleport her directly to the hospital. And that's kind of, and then he disappears. Yeah. And, yeah. Because it takes a minute before Max gets her back home. Mm-hmm. Nikita um, makes sure that she does, is not going to be rehabilitated. Mm-hmm. Um, she thinks that um, uh, Henry Scott. Is she's assuming he's the one, another counselor, that he is the one that um, put in the order because she was because we we realized somebody in her and Nikita's organization, right, is is dirty. Yes, and they they know that these are the people working and that they're getting closer. They they, they know that Sophia and Max are working and getting closer to to whoever it is. So it takes him. It takes a while for her to get better. She gets better. And Max is able to get her home. And we have a council meeting that Nikita calls. Well, this is this is after the, the council meeting is until after the bad guy in Nikita's organization puts a gun to her head. Oh, right. Okay. Tells her, gets her to go to Max and Sophia's house for reasons. I wasn't yes. exactly sure what the motivation of that Gareth. was. It was his name was Gareth. So he's Why been around. The motivation because Gareth said that he had Sasha. Right, but what is the motivation to go to Max and Sophia's apartment oh. with this information? I, I I can't remember. There was some pretense. I mean, we have to have the final showdown. But yeah, he puts a gun to, to Nikita's head, tells Nikita that he has Sasha, and it, it only takes a call from him to get her pregnant daughter and her unborn grandchild murdered. And he's given he 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 spiked her drink with something to disrupt her psychic, yes, long long range psychic abilities. Yes, yeah, so she can't get in contact with Sasha to see if she's okay. But she has still, Nikita is a master virus deliverer. So she has mm-hmm. put a virus in Gareth's brain. And, and Gareth is like, what? So be it. Yeah. This is for this is for the good of all of all Psy. Yeah. You cannot, he wants pure silence. And he's angry because this is what we were thinking. This is what we were led the um the theory that Max and Sophia were operating under is that. So Nikita is working a lot with the changelings and someone doesn't like that and wants right. it to stop. And that turned out to be the thing. And we know that we, we think that Gareth was working for Henry, but she can't prove it because Henry, of course, wiped any potential thing from his mind, but she knows yeah. that he did this. Yeah. Cause he's the main advocate for pure sigh. And so Eventually, in the, in the apartment, um, Sasha calls Faith, verifies. I mean, I know. No, before that, before okay. that. So, so Nikita has a gun to her head, and here is Max. Like, what am I going to do? But Max has hit Sophia in the room, and guess who comes to the rescue? It's Sophia who gets out of, out of the bed, and she's able to shoot um, right. Gareth. Gareth. And as soon as that happens, Nikita picks up the phone. 
calls her daughter. And this is the gangster move yes. of the book. Yes. Do you want to tell him or you want me to tell him? Go for it. I know you enjoyed this. Nikita picks up this phone. She's just had a gun to her head. She's been poisoned and she has been, she's never in a weak position. She was just in a weak position and she has heard that her daughter is about to die. She picks up the phone, calls Sasha and it's like, Sasha, I'm just checking. I sent over some contracts. I'm just making sure you got them. You did? Okay, great. Goodbye. <laughs> Gangster. Gangster. <laughs> we know it's a ploy because she was like, Max is like, uh, Nikita, can't you handle this dude with the gun to your head like immediately? And she's like, he has threatened Sasha. I can't do anything until I know she's okay. And Max is like, oh, okay. Because I mean, Nikita was never in danger. She she is a master, you know, of what she does. And she had put this virus. She could have killed him instantly, mm -hmm. but she didn't because she does love her daughter. But she can't ever show it. And it's it was really moving that coldness that she, when she called her with that conversation. I wanted a, a scene from Sasha's perspective to see what she thought about that. I thought we were going to get that because we know Sasha's been craving something. She's wondering about her mother. She, she's longing for it. And I was a little disappointed not to get, you know, someone being like, you know, your mom was really upset. You know, your mom really cares about you. Maybe that's in the future book, but like, that's, oh, that would have been so amazing. It, yeah. Yeah. Because there, there was a scene where um, Nikita did ask to meet with, excuse me, Sasha did ask to meet with her mother. And Sasha specifically said, this is not a business meeting. This is a personal meeting. I have questions. Mm -hmm. Because she wants to know more about Nikita's pregnancy with her. Mm -hmm. And Nikita gives her like a crumb. Yeah. Like a crumb, a little crumb. And Nikita, she's, Sasha's still hiding her pregnancy. And Nikita, Nikita's like, oh, you're pregnant. She like figures, she's like, I see that you're pregnant. Like, what do you want? <laughs> and... um. Sasha's just kind of she's she can't help herself. She's gushing a little bit about the little bundle of joy inside of her. And I think she says something along the lines of, Yeah, the baby gets really feisty at 2 a.m. in the morning. And Nikita stops. She thinks and she's like, Hmm, yeah, you did too. And that's all she gives her. Yeah. But in the side world, that's probably a huge win, mm -hmm. you know? Sasha mm -hmm. was probably extremely excited about that. Yeah. Yeah, she says something along the lines of, now I, I have no idea what to think about my mother. Yeah. Uh, that That's the the ultimate of that, that mothering theme mm -hmm. that's in this book. Yeah. It's just Nikita is badass. Then we get the council meeting. Then we get the council meeting. There was a, I, there was a lot going on. Um, mm -hmm. if there's so much subtext. Yeah. When you, whenever you're dealing with the council, people are sit, they're talking out both sides of their mouths yeah. and then doing two steps forward, three steps back. All that I know is by the end of that, just that scene, the council was split in two. Exactly. And so we've got Nikita and Caleb, Anthony, and probably Ming on one side, mm -hmm. and then Henry, Shoshana, and Tatiana on the side of pure silence. Mm -hmm. You know, and the other ones were kind of like, eh. Silence probably has to fall because things are getting bad. Yeah. And yeah, that was, it split into at the end. And then we have another scene with Caleb where he finds out the arrows are shifting their allegiance yes. from Ming potentially to him. So yeah, there's an opportunity for him there, which is very interesting. Chess is being played. Absolutely. And that, that part of it, like the fact that we're eight books in, you know, and this is a whole big thing that you have to follow. I do like that. You know, I like seeing where it's going. I like the slow unfolding of the chess pieces, of the plots and plans. Imagining doing that as a as a writer, I can't even imagine it. And my books are complicated, but this is, you know, this is another level. It's, it's three-dimensional chess. Yeah, yeah. Like the space chess, like Star Trek, what Spock was doing, mm -hmm. you know, like, mm -hmm. the five boards. Yeah. Yep. Um. So Sophia's still in the net. <laughs> right. And it ends, Sophia's still in the net. Like I'm waiting for this big moment where they're gonna figure out how to pull her out and they do not. However, she is so tightly shielded, like the and the net mind and the dark mind. And which the dark she knows about. She feels them both. They're both shielding her. Because she has this darkness in her, somehow she's able to unify them. Like she becomes a bigger anchor in the net. Both the dark, the net mind and the dark mind go through her and find peace yeah. within her. Yeah. And that is really she, interesting. She, it, it says that she's a focus. Yeah. She becomes a focus. Not just an anchor, 
but a focus point for, for them to come through her. And we know the net is splitting apart because of silence has split the net mind. The dark mind is responsible for all of these serial killers and awful things happening among the Psy, but it's a result of silence and it's a result of that dark mind not having an outlet anymore. Mm -hmm. All of the Esai have been taken away or, or suppressed. And so mm -hmm. it's broken. And so she's like this one little light at the beginning of hope of a way to fix it. And I thought that was really powerful too. I think that I think that that's what Faith saw, but we just it, it's not the it's the start of the vision. It's not the end of the vision. Mm, maybe so. I hope so. Yeah, I I feel pretty confident that there. And I have not read ahead. <laughs> I've read like three books ahead of this. That's it. <laughs> um, but I think that it's it's such a major plot point that she's gonna Nalini Singh is gonna figure out. She's this is coming back. This is definitely coming back. Yeah, yeah, it feels really important. And so by the end, when I was a little disappointed that she stays in the net, I'm like, well, I, I see how she has to. She's the beginning of some kind of cure or fixing it or keeping it together, something that's happening with her. And I mean, because she's in love with the human, she doesn't really need to get out, I guess. There, but we end it with they both take jobs with Nikita, mm -hmm. and Nikita will protect them. Mm -hmm. Nikita has already laid down the law about her territories, and no other counselors can come and take her people anymore. And, and the net mind and the dark mind are protecting her mentally inside the side net. So she's as good as she can be. And yeah. she won't go crazy now. Yeah. Well, and she her. can have sex. And she can have sex. Yeah. Lots and lots of sex. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! That was Bonds of Justice. Bonds of Justice. I, you know, the last book, um, whatever book seven was, was not Memories. my favorite. Blaze of Memories. Blaze of Memory. Yeah. This one is back on an upswing for me. Mm -hmm. Like, I really enjoy this one a lot more. And I'm, I'm glad about that. I know opinions will differ. <laughs> As they should. Right. But yeah, I, I did. I liked the couple. I liked how the relationship progressed. I liked that they were not, you know, li not lying to each other, not lying to themselves about it. They were like, once they felt it, they were there. It was just a matter of getting lo the logistics out of the way. For me, I just needed that in this moment. Maybe it's just where I am right now, but I didn't want any more of this pulling back and forth. Oh, I can't be with you. I can't be. No, it's like, we're going to be together. Mm -hmm. We just have to figure out how it's not going to kill me. Yeah. I love that we're going to be together. I just, I was just like, do we have to keep having the suspense plot? <laughs> Can we get back to the romance? Yeah. And that's not going to happen because I think Nalini Singh is a thriller author at heart and she understands romance. And so. Yeah. Maybe this is her, you know, finding her way. Like now she writes straight up and down thrillers. Mm -hmm. We've talked about that before. I read the first one. She's a great thriller writer as well without, I, there might've been some kind of romance in that. I don't remember, but like, I remember there's a lot of thrilleriness in it. And I think you see that, like she was honing those skills mm -hmm. from the first book where she wasn't really concerned about finding the bad guy that happened yeah. off, off screen. Yep. Now it's much more, okay, we're going to do all of these beats plus mm -hmm. the romance beats yep. and we're going to intertwine them. Yes, that is what happened. <laughs> so that was magical. Leslie, do you have any everyday magic that has happened in your world this week? Yeah, so I'm plotting a new book and, you know, it's going really well. Um, but I I had this moment where, you know, things really started to lock in because I did a, a reverse outline of the ending. So I knew where they were going, but I wasn't exactly sure how they were going to get there, like in the second half of the book. And so it's a technique that I've used before and it's really helpful. Like just say, okay, if this is how it ends. What has to happen before that? And then what happens before that? And before that, and, and before you know it, you've got, you know, up until the point where you knew and you filled in the gaps. And so just having those kind of inspirational moments are really special as a writer when you struggle with something and you're like, how am I going to figure this out? And then you kind of get that burst of inspiration. I'm like, oh, okay, I can do this. And it works. And that is a great feeling. Yay. And as have you had any everyday magic in your life? I did. I had some, I've been um, doing this um, author mastermind. I've been running an author, author mastermind and I was hesitant to do it at first because I, I was a college professor for 15 years, taught screenwriting, taught like video editing, taught producing, and I burned out. Because during those 15 years, the student body changed and people were, I, I like talking to people who want to be the best at what they do. And at some point people were just like, how do, how do I get, how do I get a C? Like what? what? 
<laughs> just want to pass. D plus is passing. I, anyway. It does not compute. No, no, it did not compute. And I burned out of it because, you know, it, it, the joy was gone because I believe that when you're a teacher, iron sharpens iron. Mm. And so I, st- I started teaching authors again um, earlier, well, last year. And it's been going so well that I decided, hmm, let me try a mastermind so we can just all just help to lift each other up. Because that's really what a mastermind is. It's like minds come together. Some people may be a little bit ahead. Some people may be behind. But you bring it together and it like compounds it. And it makes it bigger and makes everybody lift up. We know this because me and Leslie have been in a mastermind for like 10 freaking years. And right? we hit all of our goals Absolutely. because we've been in a mastermind. I was like, let me extend this. And we came to the mastermindy part of it this week. And I had four days of masterminding. And I went into this thinking, this is going to drain me. I just finished the last one before Leslie and I got on to record this. And it was fantastic. <laughs> I really feel like I'm helping people. I The things that, that I see that make complete sense to me, some, some of these authors were like, huh, I never thought of it that way. And I'm like, oh, let me show you. And, and I see people's eyes light up. I, when it wasn't, cause I don't like to be, I do not like to be the center of attention. And so and that's why I like to have a mastermind group. And so I listened to other authors who are like, oh, I see what Anessa is saying, but what if you did it this way? And I was like, oh, that's even better. Do what she says. And, and it, it was, it was what I expected a mastermind to be, which is all these different minds coming together, shining a light on someone and we all glow up. Mm-hmm. So it was magical i am talked out (laughs) it was magical and i'm so happy that i did it oh that's amazing all that creative energy it sounds lovely yes 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 yay so guys we want to thank you so much for joining us in our weekly mastermind here on ink and magic please let us know what you think you can leave a comment on youtube with your thoughts on the episode you can share it with a friend who loves romance and please remember to rate and review us on apple podcasts or on spotify and we'll be back in two weeks with the next book, but you can always check our book schedule on our website, inkandmagic.net, so that you can read along with us in the Side Changeling series and beyond. And we will see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye.